Buenos dias, que tal mis amigos? Welcome to my channel. Please support your local food bank and drug and alcohol center. So this is an interesting video. We're going to be looking at a hyper extreme toddler. Now, if you don't know what a toddler is, a toddler is a Todd Bentley follower. Now, the man that we're going to be looking at today is Brent Borthwick. Now, this is a, this is a guy. We're going to be looking at two videos mm. about other people mm. that know me, mm. and I thought. Now, five years ago, he's teaching that speaking against another Christian is blasphemy the Holy Spirit. He's claiming direct divine revelation of an audio voice, audio voice, and that there are multiple different ways that God is up in heaven, right? With the Lamb's Book of Life, he's going to start deleting your name. Three different ways. It's a hyper extreme, ludicrous, false teaching we're going to be exposing in this video. But very similar to Mike Bickle, this guy can't get his story straight because we're going to look at the video. Audible voice of God and he said, be careful what you say about other people. This is in 2019, 2024. Now all of a sudden, it's not an audible voice, but the Lord told him, be careful what you say about my people. And then we're going to look at my screen share. Uh, we're actually going to look at Patricia King as well today. I heard the audible voice of God speak to me. And he said, be careful what you say mm. about other people mm. that know me. Mm. And I thought, whoa, 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 spirit. And you know what the Lord said to me? He said, be careful what you say about my people. So he can't get his story straight. Well, listen one more time, and then we're going to watch the whole thing in context. This is a pretty shocking video. I always forget. Well, sometimes I forget. If you click the little like button, more people get to see my videos. This is live. Shout out to my friends in the live chat. Good morning. And I realized, I heard the audible voice of God speak to me. And he said, be careful what you say mm. about other people mm. that know me. Mm. And I thought, whoa, 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 spirit. And you know what the Lord said to me? He said, be careful what you say about my people. And I realized, I heard the audible so there it is there. We're going to look at these videos. And like I reiterate, he can't get his own story straight. We do have some examples of burning bush. We have, this is my son who I am well pleased. The day of when Jesus was baptized. We have the transfiguration. Listen to him. And then, of course, this man's claiming direct revelation. Be careful what you say about people that know me. And then, of course, five years later. Be careful what you say about my people in regards to the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. All right. Now, my screen share. <laughs> so, I'm an ex-boxer, and I've been listening to Canelo hi highlights right now. Canelo Alvarez. All right. So, this Canelo se el español. Si quieres, habla en español. I'm a boxing fan. So, we'll take that off the screen. If you want to know what I was doing this morning, I was watching Canelo Alvarez and preparing for this video. So, now, three ways to lose your salvation. We're going to be looking at Ephesians. Uh, Ephesians 4. We're going to be looking at Todd Bentley, disqualified. We're going to be looking at, this is a guy, Brent Borthwick, of course. This is in Mexico, 2016. And this is... 2019, two crusades in Mexico City. Now, in this video, Brent goes on to talk about what happened in the hotel rooms. Todd's not allowed to go back to Mexico. And, of course, Brent's been pushing Todd Bentley for years. And I'll give you one more picture. Todd Bentley, this is on Facebook, public domain. They want you to watch this. So, photos, Todd Bentley, and, of course... Uh, there he is again, Todd Bentley and Brent Borthwick. And the false prophets love uh, uniting. They're all toddlers. So they'd all represent as Todd Bentley followers and been pushing Todd Bentley for years. The video we're going to get into, we're going to see this video. We are going to read the Bible. This is, all right, so here it is here. Then we're going to watch the video. This video, God spoke about the Holy the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. What I heard will shock you. So direct divine revelation, an audio voice, 
You, if you speak against a Christian, you will not be forgiven in this age or the age to come. Brent Borthwick doesn't have the first concept or understanding of the precious value of the soul. Well, he, he's just inventing things out of his imagination. And he can't even get his own story straight because this is five years ago. Yesterday, one day ago, he's telling the same story. All right. And if you don't know who this character is, this is Brent Borthwick, uh, a toddler. He, he enjoys pushing Todd Bentley for years, and this is his church. It's in Langley. In fact, it's on 264th and 52nd. I've actually driven by his church many times because I used to live in Langley. And of course, his founders, they have a ministry prophetically in 40 countries around the world, often with supernatural visions that release God's glory. So he's claiming direct revelation, some of the most, if you were to ask me some of the most egregious delusional deception I've ever seen on the internet has come out of Brent Borthwick's network here in Canada. For an example, horoscope readers, football prophecies, Bob Jones, Super Bowl prophecies. Um, it's all connected to the oil patch pulpit, Mark Stephen Holstrom as well, where he has a double works base reward system of a double gospel. I have a whole playlist about it. Some of the most bizarre teachings you'll ever find are the toddlers or the Todd Bentley followers. And let's get into this video. Thanks for everyone who showed up to my live chat. Good morning. Observation Station, good morning. Thank you to my moderators, moderators that are moderating my comments section when I go live. I love you. Vision that released God's glory. Yes, Gandalf. Good morning, JLo. Good morning, Terry. Good morning, Todd. Todd says, how long will this go on? They are prophets. They are prophets of deceit. Yes, wait till you watch this video. This is, in my opinion, probably the most... Well, it's hard to say because I, I, like I expose horoscope readers and, and football, Super Bowl, ludicrous, catching their teeth and Googling their teeth falling out, Stacey Campbell videos. Like, I go after the most hyper-extreme internet false prophets. So, but this is up there. This is the one of, of God speak to me. One of the most bizarre false teachings I've ever heard in my life. So let's get into it. Like I said, he can't get his own story straight. But uh, let's get into it. And he said, be careful what you say mm. about other people mm. that know me. Mm. And I thought, whoa, 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 whoa. Spirit. You know what the Lord said to me? He said, be careful what you say about my people. And I realized, and just nail the area that we're in the real Dulce area of Guatemala. And, uh, you know, we had a 70-foot motor yacht at the time, 80-ton uh, vessel. We're in a dock that is flimsy. And I knew that if we had big winds, it, these docks weren't going to hold us. Wow. So I had storm anchors out. I had dock lines running all over. I spent eight hours in prayer praying that the Lord would divert the hurricane. He actually did. It hit, ended up hitting Nicaragua. A couple thousand people ended up dying. It was wow. a, a disaster. But in that eight-hour period of praying, something, you know, Ben, that was always in my mind and my, my heart is the unpardonable sins. Mm. One of them is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I thought, what is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit? Does that mean swearing at the Holy Spirit, yeah, you know? Yeah. What is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit? And so I was just praying, interceding for this about this hurricane for eight hours in the boat. And, uh, and I kept asking the Lord, what is blaspheming of the Holy Spirit? And I heard the audible voice of God speak to me. And he said, be careful what you say mm. about other people mm. that know me. Mm. And I thought, whoa, 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 whoa. So you feel that blast Lord that blasphemy of the Holy Spirit when we speak poorly about somebody else, not for restoration or yeah, reconciliation, yeah. but to cut them down. It's one thing if there's a problem in someone's life and we're talking to each yeah, other yeah, about yeah. it to help them. That's one thing. But when we're actually doing it to cut them down and they have forgiveness and are on the path of restoration and have the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit in yeah, them yeah. and we slam them, the Lord spoke to me and said, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And I went, oh. so in saying that, that was before I got involved with ministries uh, and restoring of, of, of certain pastors and ministries are falling. I'm in the process of another one right now yeah. where a pastor has completely fallen. Yeah. And uh, in processing, working. You know, it's unclear to me because this is, Brent, of course, remember he's a toddler. He's a Todd Bentley follower. 
claiming the audible voice of God, if you speak badly against another Christian, you will never be forgiven in this age or the age to come. You are, your fate is sealed for eternity. We all know as Christians, it's ludicrous, absolutely a false teaching. He never heard from God. He's a false prophet and a toddler. But when he's talking about working with leadership to get them back into a position of authority and power that have fallen, you know, what I understand is that, you know, there's there are some internet false prophets. For an example, Mike Bickle, even Todd Bentley's, you know, people are inviting him back into his church already. Regardless of the long history of train wreck and victims, they're the special anointed King Davids. If, if you're new to all this, the idea is that they are special anointed ones commissioned by God in this special authority. So they always go back to, for an example, the gifts and the calling without repentance. In fact, they talk about that. Where if you're, somebody's in habitual, chronic, deep sin, God is handcuffed. God is handcuffed. And the reason why they continue with their false signs and wonders is because God, the gifting and the calling are irrevocable. And he's talking right now about bringing somebody back into leadership. It's not a far stretch to believe that this is talking about Todd Bentley. Let me look at the date again. That was, um, what year is, what, sorry, I'm just going to look on the screen. Thanks for everyone who joined my live chat. This was... Look at that. That's unbelievable. June 2019. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. So this video regarding his hyper-extreme blasphemous false teachings regarding the, the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. God never said that. It's ludicrous. Uh, was June 2019. Now let's just do a quick double check. June 2019. Because he's talking about restoring somebody back into ministry. June 2019. Mexico. We're just doing this on the fly. Good morning to my friends. June 2019. And he was with Brent Borthwick, the toddler. July 19th. July 16th. July 16th. June, July... April, look at that. Do you see that? Unbelievable. There it is there, April. And the reason why that's interesting is because of this video. We're going to get into this video. All right, let's go back to Crazy Land where he's... With the leadership. Get another friend. Okay, so there it is. I, I don't want to waste my time even too much. We are going to look at the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. But this video that you're looking on the screen right now came out yesterday. And it gives us more context of what this poison he's preaching, all right? Like, there's better friends out there than that. I, I can't stand being around negative people all the time. It drives me nuts. I, 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 yeah. So grumbling, complaining, gossip, slander are all weaknesses of Jesus in you. So strength to the devil. If you grumble, complain, slander, gossip, hatred, bitterness, whatever it is, that's anti-kingdom. That is not a place in the kingdom of God. And if that's you, you have been tempted but accepted it into attack mode. And if you continue living in it, you become the tempter. Reiterate, this guy doesn't have a first concept or clue or understanding of anything to do spiritually. He's just, whatever, what I believe what's happening is whatever paps into his imagination. Of course, we don't live in habitual chronic sin. We get right with God and live an abundant life in Christ Jesus, walk in obedience to the King. Now is the day of salvation. Now is the day of salvation. That's what I preach. I preach grace. The grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions, and live self-controlled, upright, godly lives in this present age. Titus 2.11. Now is the day of grace. Right? Live an abundant life in Christ Jesus. But like I said, this guy, he's a hyper-extreme false teacher. So we'll keep going. Jesus. 
years ago when we were living in uh, Guatemala. And we had our, our boat there that we were living on. It was our missionary boat, our missionary house. Actually, our missionary center. Because the doctors and nurses all came onto that boat to minister. And I would evangelize and preach the gospel to the remote tribes of that region. And a hurricane was coming, a big one. It was going to hit us. And I went into tons of prayer. It actually ended up being eight hours of prayer and intercession. I knew the dock that we were on, our vessel was 80 tons, and I knew the dock that we were on would not hold the boat in a strong wind. We would smash the dock apart and smash other boats and probably sink the boat. So I had storm anchors placed all over. I had, had lines, dock lines, running to other pilings and pillars and trying to make sure I can, can hold support the boat when the hurricane hits. After I got it all tied up and ready, I prayed for eight hours in their intercession. One of the main things, the hurricane ended up hitting Nicaragua just south of us. It ended up killing thousands of people. It was a terrible event, but it missed us. But one of the things during that season of eight hours of prayer, I asked the question one time, Lord, what is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit? Because it's one of the three things. So if you notice in the last video I played it, He's claiming that the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, we'll back it up. I don't want to take it out of context, but listen to this. One of the three things that take you out of the book of life, that take you out of the book of life, that is a false teaching. We'll look at it in the Bible. But, all right, so speaking against somebody badly, you'll never be forgiven in this age or the age to come. Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is only one of the three things that God is up in heaven erasing your name out of the Lamb's Book of Life. So we'll back this up. I am not a Calvinist. I'm a continuationist, for the record. So we'll back this up, and then we're going to keep going. Up and ready, I prayed for eight hours in their intercession. One of the main things, the hurricane ended up hitting Nicaragua just south of us. It ended up killing thousands of people. It was a terrible event, but it missed us. But one of the things during that season of eight hours of prayer... I asked the question one time, Lord, what is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit? Because it's one of the three things that take you out of the book of life. What is blaspheming of the Holy Spirit? And you know what the Lord said to me? He said, be careful what you say about my people. And I realized, if I gossip and slander about somebody that's filled with the Holy Spirit, I'm blaspheming the Holy Spirit. It brings on a new light I become a tempter. So, so grumbling, complaining, gossip, slander are all weakness of Jesus in you. And it strengthens the devil in you. All right, so there's a lot I could say about that, but who knows what he's talking about. Satan is not inside of you. You're a temple of the Holy Spirit. And you can't straighten Satan in you if you're a Christian because you're a temple of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I preach fundamentals of the faith. Simple Christianity, especially in the days we're living in. Sadly, many people, like Brent, are so biblically illiterate and lacking the capacity to simply read the Bible in context. So, let's do this together. We're going to look at a few Bible verses, and then we're going to look at how he's been pushing this Todd Bentley character on us on social media for years. During that season of eight hours of prayer, I asked the question one time, Lord, what is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit? All right, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. So let's just ground ourselves. We'll come back to this video. And um, good morning. Good morning, my live chat, for my friends that showed up this morning, faithfully watching me. You're right. It is a very serious thing. Uh, winged, eternal, gospel and slander is very sincere, absolutely, Tina, but it's not the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, the idea is that if you ever did that, the Bible, okay, we're doing that, good morning, Tina, good morning, Castro Buchanan, good morning, Miss Noel, good morning, Karen, good morning to my moderators, now, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, what is the unpardonable sin, the unforgivable sin, this is, um, got questions, I actually contacted them yesterday, um, because I told them I was doing my videos, um, and I sometimes use their commentary, and they were very encouraging to me. 
Mark 3, 11, 22, it says, The scribes came down from Jerusalem saying he is possessed by, so was, they were saying that Jesus was possessed by Satan, by the prince of demons. And by the way, if you notice Brent, rather than picking up his Bible and reading in context, right? That's the point of this whole video. And read, all right, God spoke to me about the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. And he says that he didn't know what the blasphemy, he's claiming to be a Bible teacher. So rather than reading commentaries, if he couldn't understand blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, or simply reading his Bible in context, the Lord would reveal to him. But the Bible to Brent is like a textbook, something that he carries to push his false theologies. So instead of inquiring of the Lord by reading his Bible in context, he waited for a revelation from God about blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. We all know as Christians, it's ludicrous what he's teaching, but in his imagination, this is a direct divine revelation to the Bride of Christ. So we just write in here, we'll go to First Brent 1, the audible voice of God, if you speak badly against a Christian, you will never be forgiven in this age or the age to come. It's one of the three things that will take your name out of the Lamb's Book of Life, and God is in heaven erasing your name. And then, of course, he did it in this video as well, yesterday. All right. And we're looking at blasphemy. No Christian. How many ways? So I looked it up. Sorry, I was trying to figure out his theology, if he's the only person that has ever said that. So I, I punched into Google, is there any, like, who is teaching three ways to lose your salvation? I couldn't find anybody saying anything about that. How does a person forfeit his salvation? Can a lo person lose his salvation? Apparently to Brent, three ways you delete <laughs> you got Jesus, Jesus, delete your name of the Lamb Book of Life. I can't find anyone else teaching this, right? Because the Bible says, for an example, he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. All right. Praise the Lord. ESV, even as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. He has chosen you as a Christian before the, found, before the earth was even created. And for an example, I do have a Bible hub. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close that up. And Revelation 13, um, all inhabitants on earth will worship the beast, all those names that not have been written in the Lamb's book of life, the Lamb who has slain from the creation of this world. Another translation, we, they are the ones whose names were not written in the book of life that belongs to the Lamb who was slaughtered before the earth. Everyone's names has not been written before the foundation of the world in the book of life. The King James says, whose names are not written in the Lamb's book of life, slain from the foundation of the world. So, this man's claiming direct revelation that there's three ways where God is erasing your name from the Lamb's book of life. The Bible teaches us, God has taught us in his holy word, before the foundation of this world, your name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life. It's already being written. And um, the unforgivable sin. Now, I've said in my channel a few times that I don't necessarily even agree with this commentary in fullness. Because some people will teach that um, it's impossible to commit the unforgivable sin because... Um, the Jewish leaders of Jesus Day committed the unpardonable sin by accusing Jesus in person on earth for being demon-possessed. They had no excuse for such an action. They were speaking out of ignorance or misleading. The Pharisees knew that Jesus was the Messiah sent by God to save Israel. They knew the prophecies were being fulfilled. They saw Jesus' wonderful works, and they heard his clear presentation and truth, yet they deliberately chose to deny the truth and slander the Holy Spirit, standing before him the light of God, bathed in glory. The blas Here it is here. The blasphemy against the Holy Spirit is specific to the Pharisee situation. So there are some people that teach that it's impossible. However, 
The Bible also teaches us, for an example, that you can sear your conscience, you can have a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ and reject salvation. The Bible is quite clear that God doesn't put up with lip service. We walk in obedience to the King, saved by grace and faith in Christ alone. It's a free gift. We can't stand before God and say, we did this, 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 and this. Here I am. I earned my way into salvation. It's a free gift that we accept through faith. However, you can have a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ and fall away from the faith. For an example, uh, 1 Timothy 4, one example. This is a great example of what we're looking at today regarding Mr. Brent Toddler. Um, and this is it here. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit expressly says in the latter times, some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons. And if you were to ask me after five years of exposure videos, yes, the horoscope readers, the cartoon readers, the Lord of the Rings, X-Men, Portal movies, the double book, all these bizarre football, Bob Jones, ludicrous, Kansas City Chiefs football prophecies and so on and so forth, googling omens is all blasphemous. But this particular horrendously evil heresy that this man is teaching, he's speaking on behalf of my Lord and Savior in direct contradiction. I would say this is one of the most satanic things and a doctrine of demon. Because if you just think about this, what's happening is people come into this guy's church and he, they listen to this guy's poison. And he's claiming... Even in that little clip that we sh we looked at, he's claiming that this is an unpar. Well, let's listen to it one more time, and that's where it is. It's the condemnation that he preaches, the blasphemy he teaches. There's no saving power. It's like shut up, don't ever speak against another Christian because you're on the verge of losing your salvation for eternity. He doesn't finish with any grace or hope. It's condemnation. That's what it is. Because it's one of the three things that, though I had stories south of us, it ended up killing thousands of people. It was a terrible event, but it missed us. But one of the things during that season of eight hours of prayer, I asked the question one time, Lord, what is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit? Because it's one of the three things that take you out of the book of life. What? One of the three things that take you out of the book of life. So this is a direct reference to Jesus saying that you will not be forgiven on this age or the age to come. And then he's talking about people that are gossiping and speaking bad about other Christians. There's blaspheming of the Holy Spirit. And you know what the Lord said to me? He said, be careful what you say about my people. So there it is there. Now, the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is found in man with the withered hand. Jesus healed a man with a withered hand. And then the 12 apostles, when he went up to the mountain, he called, desired, he came to him. He appointed 12, the 12 apostles. Then he went home and a crowd again gathered. And when his family heard and went out to seize him, they said, he's out of his mind. And the scribes who came from Jerusalem were saying, he is possessed by Satan and by the prince of demons, he casts out demons. So, Jesus, he, he called them and he said to them in this parable, How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided by itself, the kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, the house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but is coming to an end. But no one can either enter a strong man's house and plunder his good unless he first binds a strong man, and then deed he may plunder his house. Truly I say to you, all sin will be forgiven, the children of man, right? All sin will be forgiven, the children of man. And whatever blasphemy they utter, right? So even Brent, his blasphemous false prophecy can be forgiven. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness but is guilty of an eternal sin. 
for they were saying he has an unclean spirit. So the only way you can commit this sin is if you were alive during the days of Jesus and saw Jesus, Emmanuel, Christ with us, God is with us, Matthew 123. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. God eternal in human form. He became human. <laughs> the flesh became, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Performing undeniable, unquestionable miracles by the power of the Holy Spirit and say, that man doing those miracles is possessed by demons and is, is filled with Satan. That would be a blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. That's the only people that could commit this sin is because they had witnessed God performing undeniable, unrefutable, in, un, it's impossible for you not to understand that that is God. Those people in the days of Jesus, blaspheming the Holy Spirit, will not be forgiven. It is an eternal sin. For they were saying this is an unclean spirit. So they were attributing the power of God to Satan. All right. Now, we also see, for an example, all right, so there it is there. That is what the reference is to the question. And it's ludicrous to ever say that any other sin. It says, the, the very Bible verse, Matthew, Matthew Craig, great question. And that's why I do these channels. I search the internet for the hyper, most hyper-extreme internet false prophet. Literally, it says right here, Truly I say to you, all sins will be forgiven man, children of man, and whatever blasphemies they utter. So, slandering a true Christian in the past, I wasn't following Christ. I repented when I came to Christ, but I still feel very sorry. That's all right. We can, I, <laughs> you know, there's no condemnation for Christ Jesus, those who are in Christ Jesus. But when you say, I feel sorry, sorry, you know, there's, there's a, even myself, I think every Christian can relate to you because if I could go back in time and do things differently, I would myself, you know, I have many regrets in my life, many regrets. You know, I, you know, I've said a few times that to friends that if I could go back and talk to myself in my twenties, when I was a young man, just being married for the first time in Mexico. I would take my fist and I would punch myself as hard as I could in the nose. How stupid I was in some of my mistakes in life. That's what I would do. I would punch myself in the face of how stupid I was and how how arrogant, bad decisions that I made in my past. But I can't. All I can do now is that rest in the Lord. And, you know, we live an abundant life in Christ Jesus. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. However, I think that, yeah, even the Apostle Paul, you know, talked about how formerly he was a, a blasphemer and how he was putting Christians to death. I'm sure that he had some thoughts about, man, you know, if he could go back in time, he wouldn't have put those Christians to death. You know, the things that we did in our past. Remember, Satan will remind you of your past, right? But, you know, we... We don't live in the past. We live in today. We are set free. We are new creations. As far as the East is from the West, our transgressions. So, you know, I think regret is something different than condemnation. And um, that's what I believe, that it's impossible for me to forget what I did in my past. Shoot, well, it's shooting drugs in the in the back alley or living or eating out of a dumpster. Yeah, me. So, yo, soy pastor. Like I, I'm a Christian street pastor and I fell away eating out of a dumpster in a back alley, right? Living with gang members and drug addicts and organized crime. I was doing all these horrendous, horrible things with a head full of Bible. I had fallen in. I was a prodigal son. So yes, there's many regrets that I have. However, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And one of the biggest things that I've had to learn is to forgive myself for what I have done. God has forgiven me. And um, that's how we have to forgive ourselves. You have to forgive yourself. And that's a hard thing to do, especially when you're living with the consequences of some of the bad decisions. Like I am living with my consequences. You know, I've been single for nine years. 
and I love my family with all my heart. However, I'm living with my consequences for my sins. And, um, but it's not blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. And um, that's why I do my social media videos on the internet, false prophets. They bring in a lot of confusion to the church, especially the young, impressionable minds, new Christians. They hear this poison this guy's preaching, and it causes a lot of confusion. And even to the extent is that Satan will come along and speak to this man, saying that if you speak badly about another person, you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, and you'll never be forgiven. Well, then, you know, maybe you continue in your lifestyle. Because if, 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 if Brent literally did, and he's claiming to be a prophet, then why would you even try? You know, being a Christian is not easy. All right. Christian Christian life is a difficult. The path is difficult. Jesus said, uh, forgive me. There are two roads in life. Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and easy that leads to destruction. It's easy. It's easy living in a habitual sin because there's there's a temporal pleasure in sin for a season, but the end of it leads to death. So it's easy to, to, to enter by the narrow gate for the gate is wide that leads and the way is easy that leads to destruction and those who enter by it are many for the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life and those who find it are very few beware of false prophets thank you for watching so you have not blasphemed and that's the other what that's the other one is that um, I always try to remember or ex tell people that if you have conviction that you have done something wrong, that's the Holy Spirit. You repent of your sins and you are forgiven. You are forgiven. Right? And sometimes it's, you know, it's a process of forgiving yourself. But you get through it. The best way to do it is through the washing and rebirth and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously, Christ Jesus our Lord. There's a sanctification that has to happen. When you're living in, you know, God meets us where we're at, in our sins, in our destruction, in our poor decisions, God meets us there. And then, of course, we go through this whole entire, now this long road, all the way down, this long road, you know, where God is working with us, sanctifying us, drawing us closer to Him, building up our foundation, getting into the Word of God. You know, now we're going down this long road. and um, But God meets us where we're at. Stay strong. That's my key too. Forgive. Yes. If you do not forgive others, your Heavenly Father will not forgive you. Mark eleven twenty four. It says, when you are praying, uh, what, what I, and when you stand praying, forgive, if you have anything against anyone, so that your Father also, who is in heaven, may forgive your trespasses. It's built into the Lord's Prayer. As we forget our debtors. All right? Give us this daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forget those who debts. Forgive. Great comment. I would have to change my entire life. I constantly have to forgive myself. Absolutely. Satan will bring up your past, right? The fiery darts of the enemy. And that's why it's important that we start our each day with the word of God. Get on your knees. Call it to the Father for help. Lead us not in temptation. But we are asking God to deliver us from evil. Praise the Lord. Christianity is a daily walk. The shame, yes, Joan. Thank you, Brother John. Right on. <laughs> if I could go back, my younger self wouldn't listen. Yeah, that's a problem with me as well, is that um, if I could go back, <laughs> you know, if I went back to when I was in my 20s, I knew everything. Yes, there was nothing you could ever tell me because I knew it all. I was a know-it-all. Now in my 40s, I'm realizing how little I actually know. Yes. How little I actually know. In my 20s, I knew everything. Uh, 
All right, I think I'm done for my live stream. Thank you for everyone who watched. Please join me in prayer for people that have caught up in the hyper extreme false pastors, false internet prophets, and um, all right. First, what does it say? Corinthians thirteen. First Corinthians thirteen. 1 Corinthians 13, 12 is a spiritual gift. 13 is some spiritual gifts. Or sorry, it's um, prophecy. If we stink, tongues in, oh yeah. Oh for, yeah, of course. If I speak in, this is get it. If I speak in tongues of men and angels, but have not love, I'm a nosy gone and a clanging single. When I was a child, I thought like a child. I talk like a child, but when I became a man, I gave up the childish ways. All right. And we see in a mirror dimly, but face to face, but now in, I know in part, and I shall, then I shall know fully, even when I am fully known. So now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, but the greatest of these are the love. Praise the Lord. Love. Love never ends. Love is patient, kind. Praise the Lord. Have a blessed day, everyone. To be Joan Weaville. All right, I'm done for my day. Thanks for everyone who showed up in the morning. We'll be going live tomorrow morning, Lord willing. And that's it. I wanted to do an update video. One of the most hyper extreme false teachings I know of on the internet is this whole concept this man is pushing. And how did he come to the conclusion? He's claiming God gave him an audible voice. And of course, he didn't know me. He can't even get his own story straight because he says, audible voice, God said to me, be careful what you say about other people that know me. Five years later, he says, the Lord said to me, be careful what you say about my people. So there it is there. Love you, Brother John. Matthew Craig, have a blessed day. Fizz out. Adios. Adios, amigos. God bless you, word nerd. And that's it. So may the Lord bless you, keep you strong in the faith. And remember, Brother John loves you.